everyone, Sarah here. I thought it would be fun to do a longer format video showing my process of coloring some of these pictures I've been uploading shorts of to maybe get some tips from you guys, get some of your opinions, share a little more about the process, help me learn from your mistakes. <laughs> I'm using my super fine, super cheap Crayola markers because these are always easy for me to find in stores, so I just keep grabbing them whenever I see them when I'm out. I found this pretty witch picture from Pinterest. I put the link in the description below if you want to do your own version of this image. So let's get started. I really love being able to put a lot of colors down and finish a picture in a short amount of time. That has been really gratifying for me, but these particular markers do bleed a lot. And I'm also doing this more for fun than to really focus on improving a skill set in particular. I'm just kind of enjoying the process and almost using it as a relaxation tool. Um, not trying to be perfect all the time, coloring in the lines, not stressing out over it. It's very gratifying for me to see the finished picture than for the picture to be, you know, perfect. Even if I hate the way some of them turn out, it's okay. I'm okay with that. I, I just like completing them and I'm kind of just doing them for the sake of doing it because I enjoy the process so much. So generally to kind of minimize the bleeding of the colors, I like to try to do lighter colors first when I can, but I don't always have an idea idea of the end goal of the picture in my head so sometimes I just throw a color down and commit to it until the image is done. I know coloring pages aren't ideal for a lot of you doing like art for therapy because you struggle with the color choices and then that stresses you out. That's what makes diamond painting and paint by numbers so much better if you struggle with choosing colors. I know I do sometimes. And that's why I always keep a scrap tester piece of loose leaf because it's so easy to forget what the colors look like before you start using them. And since these ones are in particular aren't named or numbered or anything, I find myself testing them over and over on my scraps in order to get the color that I want or the closest thing to it. It makes it harder to memorize what the color actually looks like when it's on paper, having no names, no numbers, no nothing. But I'm generally trying to work from the lightest colors and then darken them down in layers as it dries. Of course, it doesn't always happen because I change my mind what colors I'm doing halfway in. <laughs> So I'm not really sure what happened with this first part of the video when I was coloring in the tree and the skin. It seems like it got corrupted somehow. So we're just gonna uh, pick it up from where I left off and I'm doing the hair like a cotton candy pink color. I thought it would be fun to do something pastel and cute, cutesy. So I'm going in with light pink and then darkening some of the strands in with the dark pink. Just kind of darkening the areas behind her ears and 
around her neck, the shadow of her hat. Just playing around where there's already some lines going on over those and deepening them a bit darker. I wanted to do a sunset type of sky background look, but I I like to work from the background forward usually, um, but I didn't know what color I wanted the hair. So I chose, ended up choosing the pink hair, so that's why I put that down first. Um, I probably could have done this background first and it would have been fine. But I'm just um, going from a dark, dark to light. Um, just to give it a different kind of spooky fall look. Wanted to keep it very fall and I still at this point had no clue what color to make her clothes. Um, it does look like she's got leaves on the shirt but I I didn't want to do double pink I didn't there's not really that many pinks in this set and I thought any more pink would be kind of overwhelming so I just decided to do this sky get this background in and then have a look at it and pick something once that was filled in. I often find myself regretting my color choices. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? I wish I could have got that background blended more. I'm just going to fill in the tree to be a bit darker and the leaf dangling down. We decided to give her some rosy colored lips and some purple earrings. I probably could have made those stand out a bit better. Now I'm just filling in all the moons and stars on her hat with the, a brighter yellow. And we decided to make her eyes kind of a grayish, grayish blue, with a little bit of gray shading and I liked having a little glint colored reflection in there because I think usually your eyes often reflect the colors that you're looking at so kind of just did a little dab of that amber color to reflect the sky in her eyes and then making the hat this kind of mauvey purple color and then filling that in and it ends up looking <laughs> a little more pink overloaded than I intended but at least it's cohesive <laughs> so now I'm just gonna outline all of the stars and moons with this dark sort of mauve color and add a little more shading to the lips and to the face. Kind of wanted to have a contour look but these markers are pretty streaky um, so I think that's kind of the best I could really get it without darkening it too much um, and 
the purple of the outfit and the pink of the hair was kind of pink and purple overload a little bit. So I decided to make this fringe on her top yellow and darken that pink hair a little more so that there would be at least a little more contrast between the hat and the hair. I was feeling like the hat, the earrings, and the hair all kind of blended just a little bit too much. So I wanted to contrast it with that bright yellow. And then I really didn't know what to do with this necklace at all. So I ended up putting a base down of that same sort of flesh kind of tone color. Sort of that olive type of skin tone again. And I just went over all of these lines with a black marker. I figured maybe it's a lace choker or maybe it's even a little tattoo. And then I just touch up the hair a little more to finish it off. And there she is. Drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween!